Well, you're tilting. I slightly tilted there. <laughs> hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Wish for my more widescreen on the video feed. Hi everyone, this is Charles. Can those of you in the room hear me okay? I'm not hearing you in the room if you guys are perhaps muted. Some microphone is open there oh, because okay. we can. Yeah. I mean, they, they somewhere, but I guess no one is speaking back to your question, Charles. <laughs> All right, thanks, Magnus. I see your remote as well. Yeah, I ended up being. Hello, hello, testing. Able to hear this? 
Yes. Uh, I don't know. Do you see my video and is it blinking for you? We it's blinking red for me. Uh, yeah. I wonder why that is. Uh, that's going to be annoying. If, uh, I might try dropping and seeing if I can get that to stop. Okay. Hello uh, in the room. I hope everyone's uh, getting your, your lunch okay. Uh, and it'd be great if someone in there can confirm that the audio is working all right. Hey, Charles. Um, so the, uh, we can kind of hear you, but your voice is a little muffled. Okay. Uh, not sure if that's a problem with the audio in the room or, um, uh, I've, uh, there too. I think I hear you uh, quite fine as an online participant. So, so I think it's, it's part of this, uh, speaker setup in the room. Okay. Do you hear me better than, uh, Charles? Yeah, you're a little better than Charles. Okay. okay. Uh, is it is it bad to the point where I need to uh, maybe find a headset or something, or is it, can you hear me? Uh, is it all right? Um, I won't say it's too bad. I mean, uh, but if you have a headset, that you, you might want to try it out. All right, I'll go grab that. Okay, I'm trying with the headset now. Is that better in the room? Can you hear me more clearly? It 
became slightly better also for me. So, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go with this then. Thanks, Magnus. Yeah, and your video was still flashing, so I guess you will might have to round it out video. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I think I'll do that. So Charles, if you're speaking, we're not hearing you at all now. Oh, that's strange because Magnus can hear me just fine. Ah, yeah, that's. Do, do you hear you me? Hit now? me then. <laughs> do you hear Charles? Yeah, hey Mahesh, do you hear me at all? Um. Yeah, you're softer than before and occasionally not audible at all. Huh. That's really weird. Okay. Okay, maybe you might want to ditch the idea of having the headphone then. Well, uh, for me, it all sounds better, so it's very strange that it's worse for you. <laughs> so, how's how's it working now, Mahesh? Any better, any worse? Um, a tiny bit better. <laughs> okay, I'll just go with this. Um, apologies the, that it's not better. Uh, I don't know. Don't doesn't seem there's anything I can change on my on my side at this point. Um, uh, hopefully you can all see the slides okay. Yep. Okay. I'll go ahead and uh, put those in presentation mode and we will just go ahead and get going then. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Hopefully you were able to grab some some lunch. Uh, hopefully it's, it's a good lunch this time around. <laughs> um, and here's the agenda. Just kind of wanted to go over a few things. Um, first of all, the uh, notes. Um, let's see. We we had uh, folks really help out a lot with with the notes last time. Spencer, in particular, did a fantastic job. Um, the link here, uh, you can get it from the slides, or it's uh, from the the meeting information. If people can go there and and take notes, that would be great. Uh, that'll certainly help me a lot. Um, and Spencer, are, are you online by any chance? Because you did a great job last time. If you're up for doing it again this time, that'd be great. Uh, uh, yeah, this this is Spencer. I am I am in the room standing up, oh. uh, but I am in the room. Oh, fantastic! It's, it's, it is are, always a pleasure. <laughs> are, are you uh, up for taking notes? Uh, I'm not standing up. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, will, oh. I, will, I will let someone else uh, be in charge of that. Thank you. You mean we ran out of room for, we're okay, we're overcrowded in there. I can yeah. see that. This, 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 uh, it's a sellout crowd, of course. Here we go. You, Spencer. Yes. You've lost your excuse. Oh, I think it sounds like someone just found you a chair. Ah, uh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, fantastic. Uh, thanks for that. And others, please, please uh, help Spencer along as well. Um, anything else to add to the agenda? Uh, we did get this one draft added the uh, uh, 5QI, the DiffServe uh, DSCP mapping. Um, that's been added. Anything else? Are we all good at this point? I, I have a, a thing to add. Sorry, David, I, I can't haven't joined the queue yet. Um, I, it, during the a, uh, AOB period, maybe a question about uh, store and forward that has come up in SA1, SA2. Okay. That's okay. Okay. And, uh, and David? Just to clarify what you said, Charles, the 5Q to uh, DSCP mapping draft is on the agenda here only for coordination purposes, primarily to understand 3GPP's view of IETF work in this area. It's not on the agenda to discuss the merits of the draft. Oh, it, it, exactly. 
I mean, that's, that's really the, the point of, of this meeting is, is the coordination between the two groups. So yeah, yeah, thanks for clarifying that. No, I agree completely. Okay, great. Um, then we will go ahead and jump into liaisons. And where we're at here is, um, I'm gonna start kind of from the ones that have been hanging around a little bit longer and, and then work forward to the ones that are, uh, that are more recent. Um, so this one from SA5 to NetMod, there's been work going on in the NetMod, in regard, uh, NetMod working group in, in regard to this. Uh, basically, there's a need within the 3GPP uh, specifications for this concept of it is invariant and system created in Yang. And there's been a, a, lo a lot of good debate within IETF about how best to address this. And, um, and now there, there is a draft that uh, ha has been adopted by the working group. You can see it here, draft IETF netmod, immutable flag. Um, and it's being discussed, it's not at the agenda here. Uh, my understanding is we're, um, we're still making good progress on that, um, especially uh, recently since the, the draft has been adopted. So I don't think we're ready to send anything back to the, the uh, SA5 yet. Um, probably when we get to a working group last call though, uh, we'd want to go ahead and, and do that and maybe just make sure that they, they're happy uh, SA5 is happy and that this is really meeting their needs. Uh, so I plan to bring that up in the NetMod uh, session. Um, but uh, other thoughts on this one? Okay. Um, then for, for this one, this is uh, uh, related to DTLS uh, uh, for SCTP. And we've had a bit of back and forth between the groups uh, where first some security uh, vulnerabilities were basically found in our, our, our current approach, TSVWG brought that up to the, the relevant groups within 3GPP. And uh, with this one, what's actually happening is a couple solution proposals were shared with uh, specifically with SA3 and with RAN3, both to make sure that those solutions were um, well, to first of all, make sure that we were understanding the requirements correctly, and then to see uh, what they thought of these solutions and if they had a, a preference on the path forward. We got feedback back from them. Uh, TSVWG is now working. Uh, based on that feedback, there's a design team um, that's come up uh, working on a proposal, and that my understanding is an LS will be sent back um, to these 3GPP groups as soon as there's a solution identified and with enough detail that we're ready for them to review it. Um, and I see that uh, this is a topic of discussion at this IETF meeting as well. Um, anything I've missed there or that uh, we need to discuss on this call? Uh, Charles, uh, sorry, this is Mahesh. Uh, I might have missed something on the previous slide. Um, is there any action item for the NetMod working group for the draft that was adopted? There's nothing uh, required at this time. I think that it was just a thought on my part that it would be good to, um, you know, send an LS to uh, SA5 when we're at the point that we think this draft is, uh, is something the work group's happy with and to make sure that at that point before it actually goes further and becomes a uh, you know, an RFC that, that it really is meeting uh, the needs of SA, uh, SA5. But uh, I just plan to bring that up in, in the NetMod session. Okay, thanks. Charles, this is Jahid here. Uh, on this slide, uh, I think this summarizes it really well. I think there has been some updates by the individual uh, drafts um, covering different solutions uh, that have been provided so far to the design team. So it's a work in progress, so to say. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
And there, there's two TSBWG sessions. This one will be discussed in the session um, this evening, right? Local uh, Vancouver time. Um, no, I believe it's on Friday. It's on Friday, and uh, I don't think like must to discuss about this status information. Uh, I don't know like if there is any other plans so far. Okay. Oh, great. Thanks. Uh, glad to know that it is Friday, though. So, uh, all right. Anything else on this one? Okay. Now, the, the next one is, is one that was um, sent for, by the DRIP working group to SA2 and SA3. Uh, this essentially came out of um, some discussions at the last IETF that we had in Brisbane. And then you can see in April, uh, we actually sent this LS over to 3GPP. Um, unfortunately, it was kind of missed on, on the 3GPP side, so it didn't actually get posted in time for the 3GPP meeting in May. Um, and, but it is on their agenda now for uh, the August meeting. Um, it was informational just to let them know that this RFC had come out. Um, but uh, so just th that's one reason why that group might not have received anything yet. Um, but uh, this problem of it not appearing uh, has been addressed. Uh, we think it, you know, we, we have a fix for that now. But unfortunately, this one was just missed. So it was a little bit late in, in being shared with UGPP. Uh, any thoughts on this one? Okay. And then similarly with this one from T's, the SA2, SA3, uh, 5, and, uh, and RAM3, um, this was letting those groups know that uh, a framework for network slices and networks built on IETF technologies have been published as an RFC and to bring it to their attention um, uh, so that they were aware of it. This one similarly was, was missed on the 3GPP side, um, but it will appear on there uh, as a contribution. It's already set as a contribution for the upcoming meeting uh, in August. Uh, this one also, just for information to them. Okay, and then another one. Um, this is letting those same groups know about a, uh, a, a draft. Um, and it's sort of related to the previous one, a realization of network slices for 5G networks using current uh, IP um, uh, MPLS technologies. And now here we actually do want some feedback. We really want these groups to take a look at it and get back to us and let us know if the information that we've put in here regard, uh, in the appendix is, is accurate. Uh, and just because of where this draft is, and in order to keep it progressing in a timely manner, uh, we've requested that feedback by the end of August. Uh, this has been uh, submitted as a contribution to these work, uh, these groups and 3GPP. The one complexity that I see that could come up here is because it was sent to uh, multiple groups within uh, SA, uh, SA 2, 3, and 5. If they, uh, those groups um, may want to coordinate their response and send, send back basically a single response, in which case uh, what they typically do is, is they provide that as input to the SA plenary in September. Um, and so we might not get feedback. I think if that does happen, uh, then we'll, we'll figure out kind of some other way for uh, just the individual feedback from those groups to be shared, uh, even if 3GPP hasn't really um, come up with a, a combined consensus on, on the specific information if that's coming a little bit later. So we'll try to get some early feedback is what I'm thinking we'll do. Um, for RAM 3, we shouldn't have that problem. They should just be able to send it directly. Uh, any additional thoughts on this one? Okay. 
And then uh, one more. This came from uh, the SA Plenary to uh, the Quick Working Group. Uh, basically, what was happening was this was the result of some interaction between SA2 and SA3, where SA2 had uh, actually sent an LS to SA3 asking them to, to look at a solution that uh, is based on this, this draft, uh, IETF Quick Multipath, and to ask SA3 to uh, provide some feedback on the, the security aspects of it. And SA3 uh, responded back to SA2 saying that they were sort of uh, not ready to, or able to do that. They had some concerns because this draft um, didn't even have a, a security consideration section yet, or it was, it was left as TBD. So they really wanted the, uh, uh, that to be addressed uh, as quickly as possible by IETF uh, to at least add uh, security considerations to help SA3 with, with their assessment of the draft. Um, fortunately, <laughs> uh, work was already going on within the quick working group in parallel. So by the time this LS actually came out, uh, the quick working group had already posted an update uh, providing exactly what had been asked. Um, so it, it provided uh, the security consideration section. And then that and has been refined, plus uh, some additional uh, refinements have gone into version 10 of the draft, which is now uh, posted. And uh, uh, Miria sent me some, some input on it, saying that it was you know, in, in quite good shape. Uh, and so it seems to be progressing nicely. And the thought is that uh, we'll figure out, uh, it, it will be on the agenda for the quick working group uh, here at IETF 120. And among other things, we'll, we'll figure out the appropriate LS then to send to um, back to 3GPP to let them know uh, this progress that, that's been made and, and sort of the latest um, status of that draft. Uh, anyone else have uh, things to share on that? Uh, Jayad again. Um, yeah. So uh, it, it's right, like um, this, this, this happened, like uh, zero, one zero version actually have much more uh, meat on the security considerations. So I was thinking like, what happens to the LS? Do, we, do you still expect that quick working group will reply to the LS or we can just say like, okay, we have enough information here so that we don't need to reply. I mean, shall we just save some paperwork or continue doing that reply? Well, I, I think an LS wouldn't hurt here and maybe what would be good to convey in the LS is, uh, does the working group have any um, uh, things that, that it, it thinks are, are not stable? I mean, if, if really uh, the, there's working group consensus around what Miria said here, that it, it's close to final and the work, working group's pretty happy with it, uh, that kind of information would, would be perhaps helpful to share. Uh, if there are specific parts, uh, uh, aspects of the draft where, where we think, hey, this is still a, a big open issue, um, then that could be good to know as well, just so that when SA uh, 2 and 3, when they're looking at these, that they know if there are going to be changes, these are areas where changes might uh, still be expected to occur. So, so that's why I thought, well, out of the work group session here at IETF 120, we could decide, uh, should an LS be sent? I kind of feel like it should be, and exactly what should we convey in that? I'll, I'll let you, uh, uh, other coordinator, to yeah, talk about it. Peter speaking. Hello, Charles. Uh, so point okay. is, you are touching what I want to say. So the working group should reply to SA and also in copy to SA2 and SA3 so that SA2 and SA3 can check what ITF has done and then report accordingly to SA so that SA knows uh, how to proceed. Because then we have a, a clear requirement, clear set of requirements and then we know what's going on. Because SA is just also monitoring and do not make these final decisions. But if SA2 and SA3 will get this information regarding these uh, uh, security <coughs> topics, then we can have these uh, also already checked by SA2 and SA3. And SA has, do not have to ask in the plenary the opinion of SA2 and SA3. If 
IITF just provides information also to these working groups because SA2 and SA3, as already said, will meet in August and SA will meet in September. So we would have then a clear uh, guidance and position noted at the end of September. Okay, so after hearing both of you, I think what my position would be like we reply, but uh, I mean, the finalization of this whole draft is depending like on working with last call, like uh, before it comes to the AD to review and all these things. So let's, let's not talk about the finalization, but what we see, we, we reply with that, like this is the current state of things, this is where discussions are happening, and if SA or SA3 especially thinks like there is something that's missing, because they, sh they might have looked into the security consideration with the particular view. So if those are like really covered, then we did did the job, good job. Otherwise, we will be very happy to get a response like what is missing and um, if, if the uh, security consideration section is up to the mark from the ASA point of view, that would be great uh, input to the discussion. Okay, great. That sounds good. All right, thanks. So with that, we're, we're done with the, the LSs. Um, Anything else on any of those LSs or about uh, uh, the LSs in general before we move on to the dependencies? Okay. So the first several slides are um, just kind of good news. Uh, these are uh, dependencies that have now been published as, as RFCs, and uh, some of them have actually been published a while ago. But uh, now the we've kind of completed the full cycle where uh, with the responsible groups within 3GPP have gone and updated uh, their specs to uh, replace the reference to the draft with the appropriate reference to the, the RFC. So with uh, RFC 9201, uh, that's happened and you can see that there were updates to the 17 and 18 um, to take that into account. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly um, because with these other RFCs, same, same thing, uh, 9202, we did everything right there. We got everything updated, 9203. So um, with this, uh, we won't need to be tracking these anymore. We basically uh, completed what was necessary. Um, there is one that we have, um, oh, and this, this one too. Um, uh, 9430, uh, same thing. It, 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 uh, it was published and, and now the uh, 3GPP specifications have been updated accordingly. Um, this one I wanted to, to point out just because in this case we didn't quite get everything right. The RFC was published and there were updates on the 3GPP side. However, they ended up updating the, the references section but didn't uh, update the, the text. And in the text it actually uh, references the draft still. So we're going to need additional um, updates, uh, uh, additional CRs to go and update these. So a little bit more work left on that side. And uh, uh, Peter, um, can I uh, leave it to you to make sure that, uh, that those groups are aware and, and know they need to make additional CRs here? Yeah, I think here we, I simply will uh, contact the uh, chair of this group and ask him that he ask again for a CR. It's very simple changes, exactly. more or less editorial, but it has to be done yeah, correctly. Sure. And if we can get it done now while it's still fresh in everyone's mind, then yeah, we don't just let it slip and forget about it. Great. So now then we have a couple of drafts that are in the RFC editor's queue, uh, draft IETF, stir passport, RCD. Uh, this, this one's been there uh, for a little while. Uh, it, it still is uh, in the RFC editor's queue. Um, and uh, the reason is that it, it's waiting. Uh, it, there's a misrep. 
And so this draft IETF SIP core call info RCD, I see it is listed on the uh, agenda for STIR. So uh, we're, we, we, I guess we really need to make sure that that draft actually completes and, and only then will the draft passport RCD uh, be complete. So it's taking a bit of time, but it is still moving forward as far as I can tell. Um, and then draft IETF detnet yang. Uh, this one posted, uh, sorry, this one's also in the RFC editor queue and it, it's being worked. There, there aren't any, actually any blockers there. So hopefully that one will be coming out soon as well. Uh, any thoughts on either of these? Okay. And then one other, um, oh, this draft's actually an IE, IESG review. Um, there was quite a flurry of activity out of this, a lot of uh, versions of the draft. It went through quick iterations. The, the, uh, the authors were, were quite responsive in moving it forward. I, I can see now it's in IESG review. Um, I, I'm not aware of any big blockers or issues with this one. I think we're just going through our process. Um, but uh, I don't know if anyone has anything uh, else to add on this one. Okay. Then a couple other ones here. These are active work group documents. We already talked about IETF quick multipath, so I'm not going to spend any more time on that one now. Um, draft IETF Mimi context. Um, this one is still within the working group. Uh, it does seem to be uh, moving along okay. So uh, at least I don't see any reason for concern for this one as long as it continues to, to progress. Anyone have anything else to add on that one? Okay. And then uh, draft SIP core RFC um, 7976 biz. Uh, this you may remember uh, was an individual draft. Um, and the thought we brought it into the SIP core working group. So basically everyone was okay with what it was proposing, but the thought was that it was uh, actually better to do it as a biz uh, to 7976 to update that RFC um, rather than to make this its own RFC. And so that was what the working group decided. Uh, it got posted um, as an initial version of, of that draft within the working group. There was another working group last call. There were some minor comments uh, from myself and from Paul Kitsivit. Uh, and uh, there's just what Paul's comment still needs to be addressed, but there's been agreement as to how to do that. So uh, this one's uh, moving forward. And um, actually, I don't know. I, I think it's just uh, as soon as the working group's happy with it, I think that one would be ready for uh, to go to the IESG. Any other thoughts or updates on this one? Okay, great. And then IETF Mass Connect Ethernet. Uh, this is on proxying Ethernet and HTTP. Um, this one is still being worked within the working group, but it has been adopted and uh, seems to be moving along okay. Um, it isn't doesn't actually appear in a, a 3GPP uh, normative specification yet, but it has been noted uh, within a uh, the conclusion section of uh, one of the TRs, uh, which is basically the, the output of a study. So um, it seems fairly certain that uh, there will be uh, changes, normative changes in uh, 23501 to, to, to bring this in and it'll be referencing this, uh, this draft. So in this case, we're, we're a little bit ahead of the game, which, I, which is good, uh, but still it's, uh, there'll be a normative dependency on this. Uh, fairly soon. So uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on this as it uh, hopefully progresses to working group last call and then continues uh, toward RFC. 
uh, any concerns or additional information on this one. Okay, uh, great. Then um, there are a couple individual drafts that uh, have been uh, kind of around for a while that uh, are referenced by um, 3GPP specs. And uh, Peter noticed this, and, and so we've added them to the list as, as things we need to, to get resolution on. Um, this one here, draft B. Hutton's uh, JSON schema, it uh, proposes a media type for describing JSON documents. You can see a little bit of the context there that you know the thought was that rather than relying on uh, some documentation within uh, this um, uh, open source collective, that the thought was bring it into IETF and let's actually standardize it. Um, as far as I know, this, this didn't seem to get much support though within IETF. And at this point, uh, it's not clear that the authors have much energy to move it forward or that anyone within IETF has energy to move it forward. Um, so uh, we, uh, one thing would be we can go back to SA4 and just let them know, hey, if, if this is really needed, they're going to have to, someone is going to have to come and, 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 and help progress it within IETF. Um, I don't know if that's realistic though. So I'm, I'm actually curious to find, because I don't know the history of this one, um, other than what you see on the slide. So if people have thoughts on it, um, that'd be helpful. Hi, um, I'm not Eric Klein, I'm Ori Steele, Art, Art AD. Uh, I am aware of the history of this document. Um, it's a, it's a kind of complicated topic. So if you could contact me uh, sort of offline, I'm, I'd like to get the back, some background on where it's referenced within 3GPP, what you're looking for um, in terms of stable references there. And uh, I'll, I'll do my best to help uh, sort it out. Thanks. Okay, and I'm sorry, who was that? Ori Steele, uh, oh. RAD. Thank you, Ori. Appreciate that. Um, and then this next one, uh, also related to JSON, is, is uh, <laughs> would it be a similar comment on this one? Uh, this is a language for rules describing JSON content, um, a draft that's been uh, expired for a number of years, uh, but still referenced in uh, one of the GPP specifications. This, uh, I'm not familiar with this document, but uh, in your email that you send regarding the other one, if you could include it, I'll review it and I'll do my best to assist. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Peter speaking. On the previous one, I have some email discussion with the SA4 chair. Maybe I can forward this email with these guys to you as well. So then you have the whole background. Because I got a very long email from one of the SA4 delegates. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that could be helpful. Okay, thanks, Ori, and thanks, Peter. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to figure out a path forward on this one. Okay, and now uh, just for a, a discussion on this draft, and, and um, it, it will be discussed within T's. Uh, the, the goal here, as uh, David mentioned, is um, since similar kind of uh, proposals along this line had come up before and and 3GPP wasn't really uh, receptive to IETF doing work. Uh, what we'd like to understand here is um, if, if we already have a 3GPP opinion, if, if anyone here knows about uh, uh, how 3GPP is, is viewing this or if they have some insights into that, and if not, maybe what the best way to, to find that out um, would be so we can understand how best uh, to coordinate with 3GPP on this. So Charles is being polite. 3GPP was strongly opposed to IETF doing anything in this space, doubly so if it had any possible applicability to any public uh, mobile network. 
This is four to five years ago uh, when this happened. So perhaps things have changed since then. So one possibility, I, be, I guess, would be if, if there is interest within the T's working group, um, yeah, we could send an LS to 3GPP just to, to get input. And, uh, but if we already know what that input is, then uh, yeah, we don't, we don't need to repeat that cycle. I think getting new input would be a good idea. We don't know how well the, uh, the prior experience has aged. Anyone else have thoughts on this one? So Charles, this is Subir. Yep, hi. Yeah, so I think I echo what David said. Um, many years back, I think, there were a lot of discussions and also at that time, um, if I remember correctly, there are some operators. Uh, they also gave their feedback here in the ETF. So I think um, it would be good to hear from 3GPP if there is any renewed interest. Um, but um, I echo what David said. This is this is Spencer. Um, I believe I'm remembering from I'm remembering this draft from conversations with David when I was an area director several years ago. So I hope I hope that things have changed sometime some point in the past. And level setting seems like a great idea. Okay. Uh, thanks, Spencer and Sabir and, and David. I think uh, I think we have a path forward then, or at least a plan. Charles, this is Jayad. Um, so, I mean, this DCP thing, I'm mean, on this topic, especially, I'm a bit, really a bit confused. Like, what is the venue? Uh, I mean, this this definitely touches TSVWG. I, I, I saw like people are mm -hmm. now circulating in TSVWG. So, I think there, there need to be anything happens, like how we progress with this one. We need to have a tight coordination. I mean, this is information for TS and TSBWG also for this coordination here. Right. Yeah. So I, I guess the first question is: Is there at least enough interest here where it's worthwhile to, to send an LS? And, and and that sounds useful. So we can, uh, and it'll be important to craft the the right, to craft that correctly so that we ask each BP the right questions and we get some input. And then whether or not. Uh, work actually moves forward on this based on that input and whether it happens in T's or TSPWG or we decided it's not going anywhere. Uh, I, I guess that, that would be a, a second step in my opinion. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Uh, Zahid, uh, this is Suresh here. So I, I think like we had this kind of thing happening in the past about the slicing. It was kind of distributed all over the ETF and the IESG, we had a decision to kind of take it to 180. Right, like so, because there's like quite a bit of like AD shopping and working group shopping going around. Maybe that's something worthwhile for the IESG to look at to say like, okay, like anything slicing related kind of goes to one point of contact. Maybe one of the routing ADs or like you know you or like like with AD and kind of coordinate that because like you know, I personally think like you know sending a LS at this point is premature because like this has not been accepted in the working group like in any way. Like I would just say like, hey, just let them talk and if it goes further than do the LS, right? Or 3GPP send the LS to say like, hey, like, you know, we don't want you to work on this because we are doing it here or something like that, right? But right now this has like no standing. This is like individual draft. I can write pretty much anything, right? So I would say it's a bit premature for an LS at least. So um, I think I think that's a good idea to have us like route, route it to the single lady to actually work on it and coordinate this one. Um, I would prefer this goes to routing ID because this is basically, I mean, as I said, like this, this will come uh, come to a point like it, it belongs to wheat uh, area also. So we'll do the coordination, but I'm actually not sure like this is premature, because I think uh, this is the right question to ask. Like, if the question here is like 3GPP needs this uh, for some sort of slicing or other things, so maybe it, we should ask like, is this the real? Uh, I mean, what is the impression? Because we all, I mean, as it says there, in past there has been some opposition, right? Doing defining things here for that would, might be used in the three system. So I think it's not premature to ask it, 
So that also like it will help us to not invest our time in it to figure it out what to do with this document. Okay. I would agree it's not premature. The history, the process history of the four to five years ago was that 3GP was sufficiently strongly opposed to block working group adoption of that draft. Okay. Uh, thanks, David. Like, as I said, right, like, you know, I, I did not know if there's any interest in the working group to take it. That's kind of why I thought it was premature, right? Like, you know, if the working group is kind of interested, then do it. But I, I don't <laughs> have a big reason to, like, not do it. But I just said, like, why do we waste effort on things that may never get adopted. That's kind of the line I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah, and actually I think that's that's a good point is that, you know, it's not as if we received an LS from 3DPP asking for some work here. So if, if there's not interest in IETF to move forward, um, then then uh, yeah, I don't think we need to say, hey, is 3DPP uh, wanting some work that looks like this? Uh, but but if there was work, if people were interested in doing it in the working group, then as before sort of adopting it or, or making any real uh, work effort or progress around it, then it seems like it would be good to check with 3GPP. So so maybe maybe it is best then just to see how the discussion on this draft goes within T's, and then we can make the call. And, and, and do I have that right, that T's is where this draft's going to be discussed? I, I believe I saw it on the agenda there. Uh, I think so. It's, it's in T's. Uh... A question here. Who's responsible for AD for T's? And they will, are they aware that I need to and then the shares here that's a, that they can't really, they really need to maybe put in a, we can only adopt this if we get the go ahead for free to people from those aspects, potentially. Uh, that's what I suggested Magnus to Zayed to kind mm -hmm. of like close the like thing on the ESG, probably on the Friday wrap up meeting or something that they discuss it and say like, hey, like this came up, if you're looking for adoption, then kind of <laughs> check with 3GPP, right? Like, you know, if there's interest to work on it, please check. And maybe at that point send an LS as well, if there's an adoption call going or something. Uh, so they can chime in. I, I think that would probably be the best way forward. Okay, so so Jahed again, uh, if that didn't happen, like if we are not sure, like even the chairs and ADs uh, of TS actually has a view on it, and then then I actually agree with you, Suresh. Like uh, <laughs> so, we should have that kind of view. Um, and Jim is the AD for TS. Um, so let me do it like this. I will ping Jim and we'll talk about it and see like where it stands, and then perhaps Charles will keep you updated like whether what what do we think um i was um, assuming like there has been some discussion and that's why it reappeared this kind of thing in ts and there's a there is a momentum in it to do this so that's why i was saying like this is not premature to send an ls but if we are like not sure about any of the things that you said Suresh, then uh, we, we we might actually wait um until we see like how the discussion happening in the ts working group yeah, it's four more days, right? Like, you know, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. Yeah, so Charles, uh, I think, um, Jayad, um, I was definitely involved and reviewed the previous one in the TSB, WG. This is the first time I, I have noticed that a draft is appearing in TS. I do not actively follow it, but I don't know whether this had been discussed earlier. So I think that today's proposal makes sense. And if this document is only meant for 3GPB, then I think that that um, earlier consideration should be, you know, reviewed. Yeah. Right. I, I agree with that. Yes. Right. And, and I think it's applies only to 3GPP because of the fight UI naming, right? Like, so if fight UI is like a 3GPP only concept, really. So I think, yeah, we should, we should check. Yeah. It was discussed at least one prior IETF. I will put T's on my dance card and make sure uh, I'm there for when this draft is presented there. Thanks, David. This is Spencer. Uh, this is the most discussion that we've had on any topic so far, uh, and there's only two other people in the in the hedge doc. If people could take a look at what I'm capturing here and fix anything that I'm getting wrong or add names of, of uh, potential stuckies and things like that, that would be great. Thank you. Spencer Zahid is a stucky. So. <laughs> Hey, I'm only the stucky on minute taking. <laughs> <laughs>
I also think Jim Shard, the AD for T's in Slack, but he's uh, he's still on route with the uh, airplane stuff. So, yep. Okay. Be here. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and great. Thanks everyone for all the uh, the helpful discussion on this. All right. Uh, with that, a couple uh, what I think will be pretty pretty quick topics. First, um, on the coordination email list uh, that we're using here, uh, you can see a, a reference to it there. The 3GPP uh, IETF coordination. Um, I recently went and. Um, sent, hopefully I sent invitations, uh, but maybe I, I auto subscribed <laughs> uh, you, I don't know, to, to the new members of the IESG who came in as a result of the recent uh, uh, NOMCOM. And, and so there was a, uh, a set of you that came in um, and I see you are on the list. Hopefully you, you had a bit of an opt-in, but uh, uh, in any case, I, I, I'd like to know how did that, did that process work out okay? Uh, Denny, was it confusing? Uh, is there anyone who's here who um, uh, didn't get on that list who, who we need to add or who's had problems? Okay. Um, and then also just to let you know, I continue to keep the uh, mechanism that I shared with people here before that, you know, anyone can ask, uh, send a subscription request, and then I just check back with them to see like, hey, w why do they want to be on this list? What's the reason? And if they come back to me with uh, a reasonable reason, uh, then I, I tend to add them. Um, uh, a lot of times uh, I just get nothing at all, and so that it's very easy to know that, that I don't need to add them. So if anyone did try to subscribe and it looked like it just fell silently, uh, check again with me because it, it could be that, that there was um, just some problem with that process. Okay, I guess I covered that. Now, um, RFC 3113, uh, um, this describes really how the coordination between 3GPP and IETF uh, goes. Uh, it's kind of a, it's an RFC that's been around for a while, as you can tell by the number. And, and we thought there might be, uh, that, that, well, we know there's some things in there that have definitely uh, changed and, and that are kind of out of date. So um, we discussed this in the past and where we had left it was Suresh was gonna go and uh, being the IAB member who's uh, helping us with, who looks over liaison go and take this back uh, to discuss with them next step. So, um, maybe Suresh. Yeah, uh, thanks, Charles. So we talked about this in quite a bit of detail at the retreat. So we discussed, like, we kind of discussed like multiple ways forward, like how we kind of go about doing this update. And I think the high level thinking was that we don't want to put too much detail in there, right? Like, if you look at the thirty-one thirteen, it talks about the structure of like how three GPP is organized, how IETF is organized, and these are the things that get out of date pretty quickly. So, like, what we want to kind of do in the update is to stick to high level things saying hey like 3gpp and ietf want to work together like you know this is kind of how we do it and like more information should go into a wiki which can be updated so that's kind of the decision we go to so it's going to have like less stuff in it the update to that and then have a pointer to stuff like where which is more dynamic stuff is getting done right and that could be a wiki and that's kind of what we converged on and we kind of have a strong backing in the iab for that and that's probably what we should go with and, and i know like spencer has like a bunch of updates queued to it and uh, we can probably sit together like four of us and have a chat how we kind of go about bringing the updates in and where the updates go either to the rfc or into the wiki right like because a lot of the stuff can go into the wiki but some of the stuff probably needs to go into the rfc this is spencer so um if i'm remembering correctly I did create uh, some issues when we created the um, the GitHub repo, um, and those don't necessarily reflect the discussions at the IAB retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, I should also mention that uh, I am currently not working for anybody that is a 3GPP member, um, so um, it would be great if uh, somebody else uh, was able to uh, take over the work on the uh, minimal update. Um, and um, I apologize, of course, for 
not producing that much text, uh, but it sounds like that was the right thing to do anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, th thanks, Spencer. Like, you know, I, I, I can certainly like pick that up and gladly yeah. appreciate like you doing the stuff. Yeah. And we'd love to have you on still, right? I think it's yeah. still but, good. We can kind of yeah, go on, you, but. You, uh, yeah, you don't need to remove me from the repo, but, uh, but uh, I'm probably not gonna be following it like I would have been uh, at a previous plan. Hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, and then where, when we when we do have something we want to get reviewed, like like where would this draft actually, when we have an update to it, we want to post? Where would it post? So the draft should be a IAB stream document, right? Like so, we would like just take it, like publish the draft, and then ask the IAB to kind of look at it and accept it or not, right? Like so, the IAB has a process to like adopt a document and take it forward. That's the path it's going to go through. That's the last one went through the same path. So it won't be an IETF document. Okay. And then uh, I'm thinking as we're, if there's things we're pulling out um, of, of the RFC or that were issues where we're, we're, we, uh, we're addressing that, that Spencer's captured in the GitHub, uh, we probably want to put those somewhere. And so this wiki page uh, would probably be good to work on in, collab in, in parallel. Uh, sounds good. I, I think like once we kind of have the minimal update, then we can kind of look at the wiki. And, and there's also a liaison coordinator stuff like that. Media, Tommy and I are like yeah. in there. So we can kind of like start following it up up there because we do have uh, generally all the liaison related stuff in there. So it, it might be a good place to move the issues to. Okay. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Yeah. 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 So I think we were also thinking that putting the wiki into the IAB wiki might be a good place. Um, so we can create a page there for you if, if you think it's useful. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be great. And I, I, I'd kind of like to get that created uh, soon uh, uh, because then, then yeah, we, we can start to stick things stick things in the appropriate place. Um, uh, you know, start to address those GitHub issues in one place or another. And uh, just one more question to reconfirm. So I, I felt that the. IAB discussion was that this uh, updated document would be very, very short, <laughs> pointing to the wiki and really putting most of the information in the wiki, Correct. right? Okay. Correct. Um, and uh, one thing we also discussed, and maybe this is a question to uh, Peter, is um, we also, it would probably be useful to get some feedback from 3GP about like what, what would be useful for you from your side. Yeah. The, the, just to follow up with Miriam, the, the, the thing very short update, but just making sure that the things that are outdated are not, you know, don't don't live on in the BIS, uh, because there are things that 3GPP just doesn't work that way anymore. So what I'm saying, yeah. what I meant by a short update is removing most of it and just having very yeah, little I, context. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying, the part there are parts that you there are parts that would need to be updated because they would need to stay, but they still need to be updated. And you, you guys know that, so. So, but um, that's what I'm saying. I don't think yeah. m most of this, anything that can outdate should not stay. It should be removed yeah. and be moved to the wiki instead. Yeah, that, that, okay. that, that's a fine rule. Thank you. Yeah. I think, as I understood it, Peter speaking, we will remove this in, to have it really short and do not have any kind of repetition. Because currently, in if you look in 3113, you see there, for example, uh, Chiran mentioned. Correct. Uh, Chiran is... Uh, since a couple of years gone. Correct. No. This is this is the whole problem. Uh, like we felt having an RFC which is like written in stone forever is not useful. So uh, we want to, and we didn't want to just kind of declare this RFC as historic because that would be confusing. And then people think like, are we not talking to 3GP anymore? Yeah. So we decided for a very short RFC saying, now we are maintaining this information in the wiki. And then we, we have to make sure that we put the information in the wiki that is actually useful for everybody who is working here in this space. It should be simply something that everybody is clear how IETF and 3GP are coordinating each other. Yeah, and that's it. Exactly. No. That's it, Peter. Like we just put the minimum amount of information that we, this is how we kind of work and together, very short, and then like talk about the wiki where we can update things, and not just that. Like you know, kind of talk even looking at the thirty-one thirteen. I wonder if it ever worked, right? Because it says like find the three GPP people responsible by going to three GPP org, 
right? Which is kind of like not very helpful for anybody, which is probably true, right? Like you can probably find it somewhere, but it's not very helpful. So maybe like those are the kind of things we kind of like pull out. And as Miria said, like try to keep it minimal and have a right pointer to place. And I think like the IABB is good as long as we can figure out the permissions if somebody non IAB can edit it, but we need to check that, right? Like, but other than that, I think it's a fine place to put it. Yeah, at least it's the best way of doing it in this way. Because also in three people page, we are trying to improving it always. So uh, if you have found something, just to give an example, this IANA registration was never uh, traced and then it was put, for example, under one working group in, C in CT, but a lot of other groups have also done something. And then it was very tricky to find somebody to find from someone who was looking then for from an SA4 perspective, including the coding, uh, that these registrations are then under a CT working group. So this is now also captured under a different uh, on a different place in the web page. So it's easier for us to to find this. And these kind of improvements, we are still can and continue working on this on the sweep web page to make it easier for those who are coming from the outside finding topics. That sounds like we definitely actively need somebody from the C3VP side to maintain this wiki that we will create. So I hope you can help us with that. Or also, if you have proposals, where's, where's the best place to put the wiki, yeah. we can still discuss that. That was just like, yeah. we have a place at I, in the IB wiki, but like yeah. we can put it somewhere else as well. Maybe we can do one, two things. One, to put it from the ITF side, and, the, and then we can put also a link on the three web page. Right. So that we have from there also a point. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah. At, at least I'm starting to put all when I find something, I ask the person who is responsible, please add it there. <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty sure you'll find a lot of these topics. This, this is Spencer again. I just needed to say I, I need to scoot out of here because I'm on the agenda at the, in the next meeting slot. So uh, if somebody else could take over take, taking notes, that would be great. And thank you. Okay, thanks, Spencer. It okay. is always a pleasure. So for Charles and others, we, we, I have been working on taking notes and someone else is helping out a little bit in, in, in the actual hedge talk for this session. So. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. I, th I think we have a, a path forward on, on this one then. And, uh, and, and Peter, we'll, we'll include this in our next uh, uh, status, IETF status to the FDSA plenary, just to let them know uh, what, what's going on. Uh, okay. Now, just a quick update on this, the 3GPP tutorial uh, as a technical deep dive. We, we had some good discussion around this and, uh, and Jeffrey put together an initial document, uh, a set of slides, and, and we talked through them, but then the, you know, I think it came apparent to us that uh, we needed to kind of take a step back and think what are we actually trying to accomplish here and, and what's appropriate for a technical deep dive versus a tutorial and uh, and so, uh, you know, I think we, we started that discussion, but then we also decided, okay, we're not going to get anything together in time for Vancouver. And we lost a little bit of our kind of steam because of that. Um, now we're, we're, we are targeting Dublin to come up with uh, uh, at least a, whether it's a technical deep dive or it's a tutorial to come up with something. And maybe it's a combination of the two. What we decided was we're going to, come up with a, a set of topics, discuss which is appropriate for a technical deep dive. And I think we already have a good kind of uh, agreement on, on what makes sense for, for that. And then if there's additional things that would be good uh, as just overall tutorials and see if we can do one or both of those in Dublin. So my thought is that uh, uh, during and after this meeting, we'll kind of regroup and, and make, make progress on that. Um, I don't know if there's any other thoughts, if anyone had something to share. And, and we welcome others to, to come and help. So yeah, this is Warren. I mean, thank you, that all sounds great. I think we should do both the tutorial and the TDD bit. And hopefully others in the room will be happy to review the slides and things and help provide con you know comments, feedback, et cetera. 
because um, I'm helping organize this and I know nothing useful about 3GPP, which I think is true of the majority of IETF participants. Okay, thanks, Warren. Okay, and then with that, uh, just have a, a minute or two, I guess. Sorry, we don't have more time for the, the storm forward discussion. One of the um, three GPP meetings, we were told that there was an SA1 uh, requirement let out to support store and forward for 5G NTN, uh, and that there were some architectural studies out in SA2 for how this would be done. And as someone who, who works in both the time variant routing working group and the DTN working group, we saw language in the studies and in the requirements, particularly calling out delay tolerant communications, store and forward communications, and things like uh, routing over time and scheduled routing. And so we were trying to understand how we could work closely with the 3GPP because when we talked to the folks about it, they were unaware of this work in the IETF. I see, okay. Well, we, I know there is at least, uh, what? well, I, I guess that's a very specific draft, the DebtNet uh, Yang. Uh, draft that had been um, that they were aware of in, in reference, but is this kind of for the store and forward work? It's it's also in DebtNet, but that's a separate subject that uh, that they haven't been following. I guess is what you're saying. Yeah, I think there's more work here that they should be aware of than 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 just DebtNet. Although obviously the DebtNet work is very good. So how about sending a liaison statement? Because that will usually make it officially on the agenda and create some awareness. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know how to do that. Uh, work with think. charts, I think. Yeah. I, and I think the thing would be to, to go about doing that, whether it's something that we could start within one working group, if, if you think the DEPMAC group would be the right one, or if it's kind of more cross working group, then, then we need to figure a right uh, responsible AD probably to work with, right, to coordinate that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, like just send a note to your mayor, like with group mailing list saying you're going to send the statement in case somebody wants to chime in and then you can just post it using Charles. Like, you know, just say, this is what we're going to send. Like, just make sure the working group is aware of it and send a note to DTN and PBR saying, hey, we are planning to send this LS, like you have two weeks to comment on it. And then like Charles can just post it on the, or Peter, either of them can post it on the liaison page and it goes out to 3 gpp To put it, yeah, I think you are the one responsible creating the text, the content of the resource statement. Then you should um, go with your AD to confirm that makes sense and then Charles can help you to actually send it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, anything else? Okay. Oh, well, thanks everyone. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we have a, oh, you know, I forgot to ask people to sign into the Muteco um, because I, I guess one of the things, it seems like we kind of ran out of room there in the room. So that's, that's good to know and perhaps something I need to um, let the secretary know for, for next time. Um, but uh, it would be helpful for those of you, I, I think, uh, if you could go in and add yourself in the in the notes, if you didn't sign into Miteco, or if you still can sign into Miteco, that'd be great. Uh, I meant to ask everyone to do that at the beginning, just so that we have a, a more accurate attendance. So I don't know how many of you did sign into the the on-site tool, but if you could quickly do that, uh, that would be super helpful, just to make sure that we don't lose your attendance. Thank you, Charles. Thanks, and, and I'll, I'll send something uh, later on with, with the, the, the notes and then everyone can take a look at that as well. And the recording and all that should be available also. Uh, thanks, sorry I'm not there with you, uh, everyone in person. Uh, enjoy the rest of your IETF. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles, and see you then in August. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.